Der Neffe ist jetzt auch in äh, Florida angekommen und äh, wartet auf den Hurrikan, der auch bald kommt. Aber äh, zuerst geht's sind wir unterwegs mit drei wundervollen Autorenkolleginnen, äh, Krimi-Kolleginnen, die ich euch jetzt vorstelle. Hello, I'm Amy Stewart. I'm the author of Girl Waits with Gun and several other books in the Cop Sisters series set in New Jersey. Hi, I'm Ellie Griffiths, I'm here in a mangrove swamp and uh, I'm the author of the Ruth Galloway books and the Magic Men mysteries. Guten Tag, ich heiße Leslie Thompson. Ich bin glücklich. I'm the author of, and that's my German, I know, that's the end of my German for the moment. For okay. the moment. And I'm the author of the Detective's Daughter series. So as you can see, we are in Florida and the Hurricane Florence is hitting us hard, <laughs> more or less. Ich bin jetzt im Oxford Exchange Bookstore und das ist einer der schönsten Buchläden, die ich hier gesehen habe. So, wir sind jetzt unterwegs nach Mount Dora zur nächsten Veranstaltung. Aber es ist noch früh und deswegen werden wir die Zeit nutzen und eine kleine Bootstour machen und uns Krokodile, Schildkröten, Seeadler ansehen äh, und hoffentlich nicht gefressen werden. Denn Amy Stewart fährt. Da. Und Ellie Griffiths sitzt daneben. Und <lacht> mal sehen. Äh, ja, mal sehen, wie das mit den Alligatoren wird. It's such an American thing, no matter what we might disagree on. Every American loves a bald eagle. You will not find anyone who does not just fall under a spell when they see a bald. Well, I can understand. Oh, I can understand that because they're very charismatic birds, aren't yes. they? Like American. Work. I do normally have a plan but it's very rough you know it'd be just if, uh, you know one line for each chapter like Cathbad sees a body in the graveyard a woman is killed Ruth meets an old friend so really that but I will go all the way through to the end so I will kind of know who did it um, but not to say that I haven't changed that sometimes there have been a couple of books where I've sort of three quarters of the way through and I thought to myself oh actually Sensor did it, you know, it, it isn't it isn't that clear, but I normally do know, but you know what I find so fascinating is that all crime writers are different, you know. Since these are based on a true story, I know ahead of time what some of the events are, but I don't always know how they hang together as a novel and particularly what the emotional arc of those events are and how they you know, how the heart what carries the heart through the novel. Um, so I do tend to, I might start out with a one or two page summary of what I think happens in the book and, and then I might go to index cards and I might have 30 or 40 or more index cards spread out. Especially if I have multiple points of view or multiple subplots, I might have a in series of index cards for what happens with this person and one for what happens with this. And then I might go back and retype that and try to do a paragraph for each chapter. I like having a mission statement for the chapter. <laughs> like, here's what needs to happen in this chapter. Since I'm half German, I love structure. And since I'm half <laughs> Italian, I hate structure. And that's my problem. So I always plan the, the whole murder story and, and the whole plot very detailed in advance. And after 50 pages, I dump everything and then it's just forward improvisation. And it somehow works out. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm always astonished how it does, but it, it somehow does. Okay. Mm. Well, <laughs> when I first had the ideas for the books, Walking Across the Marshland in Norfolk, it was as if I saw Ruth walking towards me out of the mist. 
And I know that sounds terrible, sort of cliche, but it was. And I just felt I knew everything about her in that instance. You know, she's a forensic archaeologist. She lives on her own with her cat. Uh, she's consulted by the police in murder cases. She's not glamorous. She's a bit overweight, you know, um, but she's, she's, she's a great, um, very confident in herself and in her work. Um, she's not me at all, apart from a few little things like, you know, we both like Bruce Springsteen and we both like cats, <laughs> but she's not me. Um, but but I, I guess she's my friend. I guess that's the relationship I have with her. Since Constance is real, I feel about her the way I feel about my, you know, great grandmother or great grandmother's sister. You know, one of those people who you never quite met, but you think about and you've heard stories about. So she's, she's every bit that real to me. Um, and I feel a real sense of obligation to her, you know? No one knew who she was, everyone forgot about her, even though she was in papers all over the country. So I want her to be remembered and I want people to love her the way I love her. Um, but I also, over time, I've had to somewhat separate my understanding of her as a real person who exists and I've met her family and I've been to the cemetery, I've been to her grave. And I've, I've had to think of her as someone that I made up because that's the only way I can have her do things on the page that she didn't really do is if it seems like I invented her. So there's kind of two versions of her now. Poldi was a real person. I had this Aunt Poldi who, yeah, who managed to drink herself to death in Sicily. Um, and there is a character called Auntie Poldi. It is a little complicated for me, or it was a little complicated for me to, to, to make a difference between a fictional character and and the real Aunt Poldi. But now um, it has worked out and I have become friends with my character now hmm. and I, I realize that she is really generous with me. She is... Uh, she Okay, uh, dear readers, um, we are in uh, the Kremlin now, the Kremlin of Tampa. It might be awkward. Uh, awkward. We are not sure, but we are in the writing and reading room, and we feel we definitely feel like staying here. Yes. So, uh, in case you uh, won't hear from us anymore, take care. You can still buy our books. Yes. <laughs> for three quarters of a mile. So we're on the road again, Amy driving, and uh, we're going to uh, uh, the Seba convention, um, where we meet uh, lots of booksellers and having panels, and later a cocktail party, yay! So, wir sind jetzt in einem Golfresort, wo, wo eine Convention äh, von Buchhändlern stattfindet, die auf Autoren treffen. Und das Erste, was wir hier tun müssen, ist die beste Buchhandlung der südlichen USA zu wählen. Vorher kriegen wir keinen Kaffee. Deswegen tun wir das jetzt auch. Sehr gerne. Bookstore, they must be warm, welcoming, inclusive, knowledgeable and always with a smile. 